Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of our Python tutorial series. And in today's episode, we'll be addressing a question that was asked by one of our subscribers. And um, the subscriber wanted to know how we can make use of our Python coding snippet 004, which was for the was supposed to be a special analysis. But in the end, we used the monkey DAO tool to deduce the slopes. And so what we are doing in this session, which is based on the question, is to find out how to use that also not just on the slopes, but then on the the Kendall test itself. And you know with the Kendall test, you are likely to have three outputs. Either it's increasing, there's no trend or no change, and then or it's decreasing. So what we need to do in the first case, we maintain same code as before. In this case, we are changing slope to trend. And once we are done with that, um, we also want to use just, um, want to make use of a tweak in a certain aspect. Okay, by you, okay, before that, let's just maintain this. Maybe I'll explain that later. So you have the trend, the possibility of trends are likely to be increasing, decreasing, or no trend. Okay, so after running all the other parts in bits, or you can run everything together, depending on how, you know, where you will interest that. And when we are done, while the other is going on, we would also have to then call out all the outputs and say for all the increasing outputs. We are going to replace them with a number. Now, this is to allow us just easily um, visualize our data because with categorical data, it will be difficult to plot them out. So we are going to make use of the number so we can then have an easy um, approach of plotting out our output. And so we are going to pass this to a variable of say one. Okay. Um, in another sense, too, we could just use this, um, just generate possible trends. And instead of increasing, we are saying pull out from this possible trends instead. And then the possible train item two, because Python indexing starts on zero. And this is just the same as line 34, trying to say that wherever the output is increasing, we should replace it with one. Okay, so once we have this understanding, we can do the same for the others. Sorry. We can do the same for the others. So say for item zero which is decreasing, let's use say negative one, just indicating that it's decreasing. And then we have for item one, which is no trend, we indicate zero. Now, this is how it would be represented. It's either decreasing, no trend or increasing. So once we have that, since we'll be changing this into numbers, that's why I indicated that in this case, line 27, we just want to make use of say a huge negative number I'd say minus 999 or 9999, something that would allow it not to be um, seen. Okay, so we print out this whole section. Okay. Make use of it. Now, I wouldn't need line 42 in this case because we wouldn't set an attribute of units because the trends are unitless. Okay, so we ignore that and then. Beyond this, we want to, after this end in line 36, we want to convert all the outputs. Well, I believe they are all integers, so there'll be no use con um, converting them. So probably when it's done running, we would check the content. But then had we done, had we used the np.nand, then it means we would need to substitute the value of nands or missings with a particular integer value and then convert everything to integers to make our visualization easy. Okay. Then we are done now. What we want to do is to have the plot line, but then we want to plot for, okay, so let's take it in steps. So we have our slopes. And say for slopes where slopes is greater than the minus nine 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 nine. 
that's to ignore all the huge negatives which is representing the nines, which in this case will be the coastal um, missing data. I want to plot this instead. And we wouldn't want to make use of the color bar because that would give us a color bar of you know, increasing ranges, but then these are just specific values. You know? So we are going to add color bar and set that value to false. Okay. And then we would create the levels in here. We should have negative one, zero, and then one. But then um, we would add a value in here, but I would explain it later. I'd want to explain before we do that. So let's pass our levels before the add color bar. And then you can place it anywhere, it would work. And then we want to be specific on our CMAP to use. So there's a color map to use. And here, let's set a jet, a reverse jet color map. Okay, so this should allow for our plot. But then there's a specific thing we want to do, which is to be able to place the markers as a legend on it. So specifically, we want to make use of the contour F, since that would allow us to apply that feature. Okay, so whilst that is done, we can check our output from here. And our output is okay. So like you see, these are just um, sort of strings. So we would need to, because of the single quotes, now we need to convert them. So on line 36, like I indicated, we have output equals to np.int underscore. Int underscore is to convert everything, whereas int alone will convert just a single element. So we convert all the outputs to integer. And once we run that, it's done. We go back and check output. This time it's all integers, all right. So we can run line 39 also, but then change the name. Initially, if you had um, slope, you change it to a trend. And that's it. So we change this to a trend run, and we have that. We can plot out the slopes. And then there's what you see for your plot, All right? So these are indicating particular, in this case, they are actually no slopes, they are trends, but we are using the name slope because we, um, okay, so let's just, to make it easier, let's just change this to trends, okay? And then we do same over here. So this is indicating our trend values. Okay, so we have trends instead. So these are trends. Now, let's try trend equals to zero, which is for no trend alone. Because from here, that's, we said for it to be zero, we are using element one, which is no trend. So if we run this, we see where there are no trends. And then if we try for decreasing trend, yeah, which is negative one, because that's the zero element which is decreasing. So if you run that, you notice there are no decreasing trends. We try the increasing trends. Then we notice from here that almost everything is increasing. All right, so with that out of the way, we move on to the next step, which is to sample out the legend element to help us create our legend. So first let's assign this to a variable. And then we call the artist and then also the labels. The labels are for the indicators and then the artists are for um, the markers. And then we call out of this CS, which is what we've assigned the whole plot to, we call the legend, the legend elements. So if you run this, we should have the legend elements, which is the artist and the label. So we see what the artists contain, that's it. That's it, they are all patches of rectangles. And we see what the labels contain. And these are the labels. So we have from negative two less or equal to all the way to negative one, negative one less or equal to then zero, zero less or equal to 
one. All right. So we see from here that in <clears throat> placing our levels, we would need to I think we need to start off here from negative two. Yeah, so let's run again and then see what the outcome is. This is only a tweak and I must say this was only identified because I tested out the data set and I observed that, so yes, exactly. So it was because of this negative two we had, which is the range that it was set for. So in order to make the uh, markers conform, we also have to set the levels from negative two to negative one, zero, and then one. Okay, so let's go back to our default of trends being greater than negative nine, 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 nine. Okay, so if we plot out this, now we have everything shown as we want it. And then I want to place a legend on top of it. So like we do for a normal contour plot, we just add our legend. But we need to first import. So if you've not imported matplotlib or pyplot as plt, you need to do that first. And then after this line 42, we have plt.legend. Now, if you try with the default, let's see what happens. So nothing shows, we only see an indicator here telling us that there's a need to have something over there. So we have to set what the handles would be. We have to set the handles and then also the labels. So we set handles here and we pass in the artist. This is from this. And then let's try labels equals to labels and see what that would give us. So if you run this, this is what we're having. But then in actual sense, we just wanted to show decreasing no trend or increasing. So we've already created a possible trend. So we can replace the labels in here, which is a value of labels by a possible trends. And then we plot out and we have this as simple as that. And like you remember, there are no decreasing trends. So we see from here that there are no decreasing trends. The no trends are few which were on the sites, I mean, towards the Western coast and then also the far Eastern coast. And then we had increasing trends all over the entire domain. So this simply helps.